No, well, that was part of my, uh, I guess my what you call fantasy. These people were uh, selected. Dennis Rader, known to most as the BTK serial killer, appears to be taking credit for predicting who was behind the Gilgo Beach murders. Someone who knows him well is here to discuss BTK's claim. I'm Anjanette Levy for Law and Crime. Dennis Rader pleaded guilty in 2005 to the murders of 10 people. He dubbed himself BTK because he liked to bind, torture, and kill his victims. Rader has been in jail since his arrest. Dr. Catherine Ramslin, an expert in serial killers from DeSales University, wrote a book about BTK after interviewing and studying him for years. It's entitled Confession of a Serial Killer, The Untold Story of Dennis Rader. Dr. Ramsland told me that Dennis Rader called her on Sunday and practically took credit for predicting the profile of the suspect in the Gilgo Beach murders. He also wrote a letter to a reporter at Fox Digital. That reporter quoted Rader as writing, I was arrested, age 59, married, two kids, Husband, dad, longtime a serial killer, stalker, used electronic devices, lives in a neighborhood undetected. Rex Yorman, of course, is 59 years old and married with children. He worked as an architect and lived in the suburbs. Here's what Dr. Ramsland told me about her call with Dennis Rader. So first, he likes to have some contact with media because he likes to keep his name out there in the public and with this new serial killer, he's kind of been overshadowed. So he communicated with one of the reporters that he's had a relationship for a long time to talk about the fact that he had predicted this is who the Long Island serial killer would be. He had predicted it ten, uh, in tw- when the bodies were first found. And so he wants people to know that he was right. And then he said, he's a clone of me And here are the similarities, and he made a list. Now, let me just say, before I make this list, most of these similarities are very superficial and really not quite what he's making them out to be. I even had a conversation with him about it yesterday. Um, He thinks, well, because they were both arrested when they were 59, they both got away with it for a lot of years, although for him it was 30 years, and for a human, if he is in fact convicted, which we don't yet know. So allegedly, it's 15. Um, He had a wife, two kids, a son and a daughter. He lived quietly in his neighborhood, passing as an ordinary person. Nobody suspected him. And he was essentially brought down with what Rader terms electronics and DNA. Well, that's a little (laughs) stretch because Rader actually handed the police the computer disk that brought that got him arrested and uh Heerman hung on to some burner phones and it took police a long time to finally make that arrest in addition raider confessed when they told him they had dna that pretty much nailed him he said well then you only know about seven i'll tell you about three more <laughs> so he wanted to be a serial killer. He wanted to be known as a serial killer. That is not what we're seeing with Hewerman. Also, Rader went into the homes of ordinary people to kill them. He stalked them. He had projects. He had over 50 projects. He looked in people's um, windows. He watched for people. He looked for what he considered his perfect victim. Um, and Hewerman made dates on Craigslist if in fact he turns out to be the guy. That's a very different kind of uh, association with victims. So I really don't see there are that many parallels, but it is interesting that at the same age when they were arrested and they both were family men. Did Dennis Rader just call you out of the blue? Does he contact you frequently? Uh, Dennis Rader contacts me uh, at least once a month, maybe more often if something comes up because We spent five years writing a book. We then spent another year working on a four-part documentary for the A&E Network. Um, So we've been pretty pretty closely associated for about 13 years. And I just like to check in with him. Um, I know that right now he's being questioned in relation to some cold cases. 
So that would be of interest to me. If I, if something happens, I would certainly want to continue my work with him. So it, it's not surprising to me that we've made contact over this. According to published reports, Dennis Rader has been questioned in two cold cases, one from Missouri and another from Oklahoma. There was one in Missouri that does have a lot of the marks of his victims. It, uh, this woman was bound, was dumped uh, in the yard of an abandoned farm. Raider had a lot of fantasies about abandoned farms. Um, it was an area that was near where he grew up. So, you know, there were reasons to consider him um, and they're questioning him. I, I doubt very much he's going to be associated with that one. There are a few in Kansas that were initially investigated, but now people are wanting to look at them in more detail. And I think right now we're getting a lot of attention to cold cases because we have better technology. We have, um, you know, new teams to rethink how things were. I mean, when Raider was arrested in 2005, uh, a lot has happened. And so I think they're just revisiting open cases uh, just to make sure they can rule him out. And that's what's going on. Do you think that Dennis Rader is responsible for possibly more homicides than the ones he has confessed to? Well, I wouldn't, I'd never rule that out. Um, I, I don't see the connections of, of the ones he's being questioned about now, but that doesn't mean there aren't others. And I would never rule that out. Back to Huerman. He obviously wanted to, he got some type of satisfaction out of thinking I was right. Uh, you know, there's a bit of narcissism there. I mean, I, I probably shouldn't be saying that, but I mean, you're the expert. Uh, you're the one with the background, but it sounds like he, he likes to be right. And I predicted this, you know, that type of thing. Dennis Rader. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to, he wants to be considered um, somebody certainly who has insight. Um, I've looked at this, a lot of cases where, you know, we have this notion that serial killers have insights about other serial killers. Certainly Ted Bundy made that claim that he wanted to be kept alive as a resource for helping police track down other killers. He even tried to do that with the Green River killer. Um, he didn't actually offer very much, um, but we learned a lot more about him when he did that. Um, on occasion, we've had people who have had some association with another killer who've been able to shed some light. But um, I do not, and I said this to Rader when I talked to him, we have no idea what the motivation was for Hearman. He, he could have been motivated by anger. He could have been motivated by a mission because we, we've had serial killers who've targeted sex workers who thought they were doing police a favor, Gary Ridgway being one of them. Um, he might have been motivated sexually. We don't have any idea at this point. We can speculate, but we don't know. One of the cases I know in the legal material suggested that he was angry at one of the victims, so a alleged victims. <laughs> so who knows? And it could be that there's really no similarity between him and Raider at all when we really find out more about this case. When he said these things to you, Dennis Raider did, what was your response to him? I said to him things I just said, and he ignored me entirely because he wants to be the expert on this case. And um, I think it's interesting, of course, that back in, I guess it was 2011, he told another reporter that he thought this person was go going to be similar to him and he likes to feel vindicated in that. Um, that gives him a special pleasure because he is narcissistic and he knows it. Um, so he ignored me saying there's a lot of differences here. He didn't want to hear that. Yeah, I wondered how much you push back on him because you've known him for so long. I wonder if you're you are able to kind of call him out a little bit. I, I called him out. I called him out throughout the writing of the book because he, of course, is an oppression manager. He wants certain things to be said. This was his big shot at putting his story out there. He 
he kind of viewed me as his secretary, which I was not. <laughs> so, um, and I had other resources that would help me see when, you know, not always when he was lying, but certainly some of the time and I would call him out. Um, but we, I guess we've developed a sort of enough of a rapport uh, where he does trust me and, um, but he's not going to let me tell him that he's not exactly correct on what he's trying to say, because this is a big moment for him in the press and he wants to play it up as much as he can. I also asked Dr. Ramsland about whether serial killers are able to get away with their crimes for long periods of time because they're good at masking their behavior and basically putting up a front. I would never make a generalization about all serial killers because we're talking about thousands of people and there's a lot of variation in that category. Um, certainly any who are aware, organized, predatory, um, who get away with it, do take some pride in it. Some of them develop an attitude called narcissistic immunity, where they believe, you know, they have, they're the smartest person in the room, or they're, they're, they're destined in some way, or they have some magical shield or whatever. But yeah, they do take pride in being able to get away with things, especially if they really worked at covering up evidence, um, deflecting police, they really worked at it and it succeeded. They, they certainly are, um, you know, glad for that. And they will cultivate their lives so that they can get away with um, passing as ordinary people. If they have jobs, if they have a family, if they have social status, like Dennis Rader was the president of his church congregation, um, Boy Scout volunteers, we've had a few who were involved in, in that or other kinds of charities. They don't want to lose that. So they want to live double lives and they, they cultivate that as carefully as they can. Over the weekend, police in Suffolk County used excavators to dig up Rex Huerman's backyard in Massapequa Park. Police have been searching the home for nearly two weeks, along with storage facilities. They're digging up the backyard as they should be because there were reports that he had been burning things back there. So possibly he's burning items and even clothing belonging to the victims. Possibly he uses backyard to bury someone. Rex Huerman has pleaded not guilty to the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. He could soon face charges in the murder of Maureen Brainerd Barnes. The search of Huerman's cluttered home ended on Tuesday. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.